Hi boys and girls. Today I want to talk about the Easter lily. It's the perfect flower for Easter. You probably have one at your home too. Growing up we always had one at Easter time. It's the perfect flower for Easter. It's beautiful aroma. It's so sweet and fills the air. And the blooms are like trumpets announcing the good news of Easter. It's hard to believe that a lily starts out as a bulb. It looks something like this and is down in the ground, dormant or sleeping until the conditions are just right for it to produce this beautiful plant. And then after the plant dies back, the bulb will sit in the ground until next year when it will bloom again. So the book I have for you today is called the Parable of the Lily by Liz Curtis Higgs and illustrated by Nancy Munger. A parable is a story that Jesus would tell people. It would give them advice on how to live their life or give them insight on their relationship with God. So I want to share this book with you, The Parable of the Lily. It's a little different book. It has a, a simple story on the outside, but as we move through, you'll see some biblical phrases at the bottom. For Lillian Margaret Higgs, our own Easter Lily. On a wintry day, the farmer's young daughter shuffled through the snow, headed for the mailbox at the end of the lane. Brr, it was cold. Hmm. She peered inside the mailbox and found a small white envelope. Surprise! It was addressed to her. Dear Maggie, the letter began, I'm sending a very special gift just for you. Look for it soon. Maggie loved getting presents, especially a gift as mysterious as this one. When would it come? Who was it from? What would it be? And here from James 1, we have, every perfect gift is from God. The farmer's daughter waited and waited, some days patiently, some days not so patiently. Then one very ordinary afternoon, a box appeared on her doorstep. The gift had arrived. I'm sure she was so excited. Our Bible verse is from Matthew 24. So you also must be ready. The Son of Man will come at a time when you don't expect it. The farmer watched as his daughter excitedly tore off the wrapping paper. He was eager to see what she thought of her present. But Maggie didn't say a word. She just stared at the small wooden crate full of dirt. Dirt was not at all what Maggie had hoped for. From Isaiah 53, there was nothing on his appearance to make us desire him. Look how disappointed she looks. Poking out of the soil was a small piece of paper that told Maggie how to care for her gift. Hide in a cool, dark place. Water is needed. When spring comes, bring into the light. Then she knew it must be a growing thing, like a bulb that would someday bloom into a plant. And again from Isaiah 53, he grew up like a small plant before the Lord. He was like a root growing in a dry land. Oh dear, her long-awaited gift wasn't a toy or a doll or a game after all. The farmer could see that his daughter was very disappointed. His heart grew sad. The gift was from him. For God so loved the world so much that he gave his only son, John 3. 
With a sigh, Maggie carried the wooden box down the steps into the darkest corner of the cellar and left it there on a shelf. Sometimes she remembered to water it, but most of the time, Maggie just plain forgot. He had no special beauty or form to make us notice him. From Isaiah 53. The farmer did not forget. He just waited and he watched. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light things that are now hidden in darkness. 1 Corinthians. Spring came at last. The air was warmer and the gray skies had melted into a robin egg blue. What a welcome sight the sun was. It was time for the farmer to hoe his garden, getting the soil ready for the seeds that filled his pockets. From Isaiah 61, In the same way the Lord God will make grow what is right. Maggie wanted to help, so she marched down the cellar steps to get her own Maggie-sized gardening tools. That's when it happened. Searching for her toolbox in the darkest corner of the cellar, Maggie knocked the forgotten crate of dirt off the shelf. Crash! The crate splintered into pieces. Soil was everywhere, and the flower bulb that rolled to her feet showed no signs of life. There it is. I tell you the truth. A seed must fall to the ground and die. Then it makes many seeds from John 12. What a mess. Maggie was mad at the box and even madder at herself. She swept up the dirt and threw away the broken box, grumbling under her breath. And that ugly old flower bulb? She tossed it out of the cellar door, never to think of it again until. He was hated and rejected by people. People would not even look at him from Isaiah. Wonder what is going to happen. Maggie woke up early than usual, usual Easter morning. A warm breeze blew through her bedroom window and the chirping birds seemed to call her name. Very early on the first day of the week, the women came from Luke. Still dressed in her nightgown, Maggie tiptoed out into the garden. She was hoping to find some daffodils or tulips to decorate the table for Easter breakfast. That's when she saw it. The loveliest lily that God ever made was blooming on the edge of her father's flower garden. Its white petals unfolded like a trumpet. Its leaves were green with new life. Its scent was as fragrant as the most expensive perfume. Thanks be to God for his gift that is a wonderful thing to explore. But I tell you that even Solomon with his riches was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. Maggie knew all at once what had happened. She didn't know whether to laugh or cry or shout with joy, so Maggie did all three at once. Wake up, everybody! Wake up! Come see! The gift is alive! They were afraid, but they were also very happy. They ran to tell what had happened. Her family hurried out to the garden. They couldn't believe their eyes. So much beauty from such an ugly box of dirt. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. From Isaiah 33. Maggie noticed the farmer standing in the doorway, quietly watching his smile, gave away his secret. Father, it was you who gave me the lily. Maggie squealed with delight, and suddenly her little girl's smile began to fade. Oh, dear. She'd thrown away her father's gift without so much as a thank you. How that must have hurt him. But he took our suffering on him and felt our pain for us. 
I'm sorry, Daddy, she said, putting her little arms around his big waist. Will you forgive me? Oh, my child, the farmer whispered, hugging her tight. That's what Easter is all about. This is how God showed his love for us. He sent his only son into the world to give us life through him. From 1 John. The end of the parable of the lily. I hope you enjoyed it.